Hello everyone, Eileen Godwin here with another Lavinia Stamps video tutorial for you. Now, I'm loving our Fairy Fest extravaganza, I hope you are too. And I'm featuring some of the fabulous new stamps from our July new release. Beautiful images, very detailed and very elegant designs. I'd just like to say thank you for being with me today. It's so great to have your company. And uh, this is the card that I've chosen to show you how to make. I've enjoyed it so much, I've made two already. <laughs> um, right, I'm using, let's get going, shall we? I'm using the absolutely gorgeous Drooping Dandelion here, along with uh, one of our stencils that is called, uh, what's it called? I've written it down. Yeah, Dynamic in the background. And then um, a brush with a chiseled edge, you know, this sloping edge. This is a uh, from a do-it-yourself store. Um, and a very useful gadget that I use to draw lines with, one of these T-squares. Okay, so let's show you how I made this. So I have a piece of Lavinia Stamps white cardstock and it's an A4 sheet that I've folded, creased and I've cut it to a 14 and a half centimetre square. And it's tent fold, which is my preferred choice there, but you can do it this way if you wish, no problem. So pop that down there. Now I'm going to remove, not remove, I'm going to bring the camera uh, forward a little bit more or just to show you uh, a close-up actually of well whilst I'm working so hold on you're going to get squeaky chair moment I told you <laughs> right uh, that's better I think nicely positioned yes that's a bit better isn't it okay uh, another squeaky chair moment coming along no, I'm not getting rid of this chair. It's so comfortable, okay? <laughs> right. So that's my um, card blank. And now I'm using some Sweet Poppy Stencil Low Tack Stencil Tape to make a frame. So I'm just going to stretch it slightly along the edge and it sort of finds its own level, makes itself straight. that inside to protect the inside of the card so you're doing this all around the edge I'm not pressing too heavily here on the tape but this edge here I want it to be firmly stuck down last piece in place and then that allows me to take a pencil and I need just to draw and it doesn't matter if it isn't straight I'm just using the tape as a guide but if you make a mess don't worry about it because I'm going to do a squiggle frame at the end and it will cover up any mistakes more about that as we go along so I've just got a, a rough idea of where the frame will be. Leaving that in place, taking my T-square, I don't need all this copy paper, actually. Myself sorted in a minute. 
I've, we've been on holiday for a couple of weeks, so I'm a sort of uh, out of practice regarding the videos. So I'm just coming down below halfway with my T-square. I've got a mark on there already, but that will go. I will cover that up with a stencil. And taking the slanted brush, any uh, flat top brush will do. This is angled, which I like, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm using some archival inks. So what colours? Let's go starting off with, let's have some green to start off with. This is peeled paint. I've only got the one brush, but a bit of copy paper beside you, you'll be able to brush off the surplus of the ink that's left and it should be okay. So you can use one brush for each colour. Just test how much I've got on there. So starting at the edge and then coming out, done this before I'm sure it just gives me a line there but I don't want to have straight lines all the time on this one so the next one I'm going to angle down I think change my mind because I looked at the card that I'd done <laughs> always a uh, yeah it's always a good idea Try and stick to the copy that you've done before, Eileen. Okay. Um, now, pink. Picked raspberry. Love this. Same brush. Just wipe off a bit of the green. Will it contaminate your ink pads? Well, it shouldn't really, but, you know, I don't mind if it does a little. Down we go again. The pink. I'm not going right over to the right hand side as you've seen now i'm going to angle down a bit more and choose another color uh, this time let's have some fossilized amber take off the surplus again so i'm trying to get my t-square to sort of grip on the side of the card so this edge here is, is just catching the lip of the card so it holds it in place. If not, just rely on your fingers to keep firm pressure and it will be fine. And you can, obviously, you can use a ruler. You don't need one of these. Um, right. Fossilised amber. And down again. Okie dokie, and I think that we'll have, how many of, did I have on that? One, two, three, oh, five, so I've got to do two more. Okay, let's go for faded jeans, one of my favourite colours, I love this. Take off the yellow, otherwise I'll get some green tones, and I've already got green on there. So up, up there, and... Holding it tightly. Let's bring out some lines there. Just gently, not pushing the colour into the card too much. Just gently layer upon layer and sort of let it fade out. Gentle. I'm having a gentle day today. It's early in the morning here and I haven't quite woken up. I haven't had my wheaty bangs yet. So I'm having breakfast as soon as I've finished this. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I'm waffling a bit, aren't I? Yeah, well, I've missed you all. Um, what next? What other colour? Oh, orange. Always good to have some spice marmalade. And then some more here. And again, different lengths, different widths with the colour. Don't go every, every, you don't want stripes going across. Try and get some interest with the different amounts that you're putting on and the longer the lengths of the, uh, of the lines that you're making. Right, that should do. Now to add even more interest, um, pop these paints away, paints, inks. And now I'm going to use some of the Barn Door Archival. 
and my stencil. And this is, I, I've given you the name already, but I don't mind. I'll tell you again in case you missed it. It's dynamic, <laughs> which I'm not at the moment, but uh, I'm going to be by the end of the day. That's my plan. Same brush. You can use any brush you like, but same brush will do. Bit of barn door. Don't want it to be too dark, but I do want to see it. And then just going to try and keep within all the lines of the colour that I've got down. And then just gently. Add some more interest in the background of this stencil. Let's have a look. Oh, that's not bad. A bit more colour, I think, in the middle area. Make it a bit more dramatic. No, oh, that's good. I'm quite liking that. <clears throat> now, it's time... <clears throat> Excuse me to have a drink. To remove the tape. That's what I wanted to say. It's time to remove the tape. Okay, right, now then take a look at your design and if you see any areas um, that you think, oh, I wish they weren't there um, and also I want to add a little bit of um, shade as well and uh, dimension, I'm just going to take my sand eraser. This is a Tombow sand eraser, Tombow mono sand eraser. And the code number of this is 512A. And those of you that um, follow me, and thank you very much for that, um, you know that I use this all the time. And um, I find it especially useful, especially when I'm using um, Lavinia Stamps cardstock. The cardstock seems to hold up so well uh, with the punishment that I give it when I use this eraser. And I'm just going to get rid and I'm pressing and rubbing quite firmly some of this background stencil pattern because it's sort of gone out of the area that I want it to be in. So I'm just going to remove it. Now you are damaging part of the cardstock so you can't do this and then apply another load of ink over the top because you'll get slightly different colours and because the um, the eraser will uh, disturb the fibres of your card and make your cardstock more porous and it will suck in more ink and the ink will turn out to be slightly darker, I think. That's what I've found anyway. So I've just removed some stray bits there. Concentrating the pattern in the middle and now I'm going to add my main image. And uh, I'm not taking any chances. I'm not proud. I'm going to use a stamp press. So pop this in, just make sure you can see what I'm doing. Move that up a little bit. down all right so let me just see i get paranoid that i'm not going to stay in shot okay <clears throat> so i'm using the drooping dandelion an absolutely lovely image i mean it's so quirky
So just popping that so that the um, stem, the bottom of the stem, is right over that line that I've drawn with the pencil frame, around the frame. Down a little, it's about just over half an inch up from the bottom. I'm just trying to get as much of the stem as I can to line up with the uh, edge of the frame. So one leaf is, is on your stenciled image and the other leaf is outside of that framed area. And I think that's okay. Down we go. First fine Claire Nocturne. My preferred choice of ink for detailed stamps. Gorgeous day down here in North Kent today. Beautiful, sunny, warm already. I need a bit of a cloth there. Got some stray ink. Okay, let me see how this will go. Over we go. bit of pressure. Gorgeous. Hmm, I think I'm fine with that. I shall clean the stamp off with a little bit of, well a damp cloth actually, or a little bit of um, mild washing up liquid and water. So there we are. Oh, I think that looks lovely. It's such a delicate, delicate image. Oh, I need my stamp press again, because the words are next. Got ink on fingers, just give those a quick wipe. Put that down again. And where's the words now? The words, some see a weed and others see a wish. Makes a change from happy birthday or merry Christmas. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's ideal here. So I'm going to just line it up with this outside edge and just try and get it as straight as I can. I reckon that's okay. Pick it up. It's more first fine clear nocturne. Got the pickle in me today. I'm feeling really well. I wasn't very well whilst on my holiday. I had a cold, so I was knitting on one needle for a week. Um, yeah, it sort of ruined a little bit of it, but then we were in the Scottish Highlands, so at least I had uh, beautiful views and uh, the weather wasn't too bad either. Right, but this week I'm feeling really, really well. Some see a weed. Others see a wish. Done. Couple of other little bits to do. First of all, make sure my hands are clean. And I'm going to go back to my eraser. We'll need that. And also I need some... Um, this is a pearl pen, but you can use any dimensional pearl drops that you've got or glitter or beads, anything that you like. 
just to add a little bit more interest. So coming back to those, going to start off with my eraser. I want to put some, um, rub out some of the ink here to give it a bit more dimension. It looks a bit flat. So if you just, just going to rub out quite a bit of pressure on the coloured inks, but try and avoid your black nocturne lines of the image. You don't really want to move the ink around there. Just popping in a few erased areas. I'll show you what that looks like. And you see the difference that's made? Look, I like the look. I, I don't know the technical term. Is it high lights, low lights? I don't know, but I just like the look of it. It just gives me that little bit of texture and a little bit of dimension and sort of adds to it. And it's cheap to do as well, which is always a bonus. <laughs> now, um, last but not least, oh, no, I've got to do my frame. Need a black pigment ink pen. And this one is, um, da -dum, da -dum. what's this one? This is Sakura pen. 0.5 millimetres. I think that is, oh, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.45 millimetres. So I'm going to now just go around this frame, which is why it doesn't matter if you make it all wriggly and mistakes at the beginning when you draw the pencil, because um, not rubbing the pencil out, but I'm deliberately being a bit squiggly now. That's a technical term, by the way. So now I'm putting in another one. So that disguises any more squiggles. And everyone thinks that you meant to do it. You know. So, oh, that's artistic. But if you want a straight line, then use a ruler, you know. You won't get into trouble, honest. bit more here and then finally what I want to do so that this sort of leaf section isn't floating in midair I'm actually going to increase the amount of ink I use at the bottom of this image to make it look as if it's supposed to be part of the frame because otherwise it, you just plonk it there and people think oh okay but I wanted it to look as if it was meant to be, which now it does, I think. Yeah. So a couple of pearl drops now. This is where it could all go horribly wrong, so be careful. And I'm just going to put three in. One. These are gold. Don't want too much of a tail on it. Two, three. That looks all right. Hmm, I don't like the tail. I don't know why. It's got a bit thick at the end. So let's see if I can pop that down a bit. It's like three volcanoes <laughs> trying to come up. <laughs> hey ho. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will have to get rid of that. Now I have got, I've got, let me see if I can, I'm trying to flatten this sort of tail area or that's come out too much. I think that my pearl dimensional ink or whatever paint, whatever it is, it's got a bit thick. And, um, but that's good. I mean, at least when you squeeze it, it doesn't go all over the place, does it? <laughs> right, enough. I am so glad to be home. <laughs> More videos again now, soon, on a regular basis now that I'm back. But I've loved doing this. And I've loved using all the new stamps. I'll be posting my samples on Facebook. I'm a bit late with them. 
I'll be posting some of my uh, samples on Facebook later. Probably sometime tomorrow, so watch out for those. Keep an eye on the Lavinia Stamps website for the new releases. They are absolutely gorgeous. So here's the one that I made earlier. That's the one that I've just finished. I've got another one as well. I'm going to show you that as well. It's all the same, but why not? There we are. A plethora of really pretty cards. But simple to do. And I've had fun. Right. See you again soon. Thanks for being with me. It's so appreciated your support. Have a super day. Bye for now.